Hello everyone, this is HP Eski here, back with another vlog, and uh, it, you may not notice, but I don't actually have my contacts in, so if I'm like looking over here while I'm talking, it's because I'm actually super blind right now. Um, everyone was saying that when I have my glasses on, it kind of reflects like crazy. I rewatched the video and I was like, I don't have eyeballs. Now before this vlog gets started really quick, I want to say thank you to everyone who's left comments, who has um, rated the videos, who's left feedback, who's sent me emails and stuff about my vlogs. I really appreciate it. Out of all of the videos that I read comments on, the vlogs are the ones that I read the most. Now I still do go through vi uh, a lot of my videos and read the comments, but um, these are the ones that I really get to the nitty gritty and try and answer the questions that you guys have. And one of the biggest questions that I've been getting for an extremely long time, I'll admit I've probably got it several thousand times, is what happened between HD and Husky? So I'm, I'm going to answer it as best I can, but honestly I'm going to downplay it right now because not a whole lot happened. And I think the way that people ask the question in the first place is what happened between HD and Husky, as if, you know, since they aren't working together as much, obviously something has happened, as in something drama-filled that everyone wants to hear. So, unfortunately, not to be a big letdown, but there was no major drama or anything like that. Um, so everything where, where people are saying that HD slept with my girlfriend, I slept with his mom, we got in a fight, um, one of the really common arguments as well is that, you know, HD offended me, or when we were casting, I would step on HD's talking too much and I offended him, and honestly, none of this is true at all. Um, I, I think, honestly, a lot of people love to have some sort of explanation for things, um, and, and this is something that I think people, you know, they didn't know what happened. Happened, so they're going to make their own rumors and say, you know, this happened or this happened, um, but really nothing happened. Now, to kind of go way back, for those of you who don't know, um, back in even Brood War days, me and HD, who is another caster, we used to cast together a lot. When we first started YouTube, we were kind of the, the first person that each other kind of knew who was doing the same thing. There was other casters at the time, like there was Moltrap and Diggity and Clazard and a lot of others as well, but we didn't really know them because they had been doing it for a couple of years at that point. We were kind of latecomers to the game and we uh, basically, since we started doing StarCraft, we were kind of, you know, underdogs and we, you know, teamed up and did cast together. It was a lot of fun. And as time went on, when the StarCraft 2 beta came out, we did a tournament together. We cast the very first MLG together where they had StarCraft 2. Um, we were dual casting on that. It's really awkward if you watch the videos. I love comparing my cast now to back then. Definitely a major change, but I still think I can get even better. And so, kind of after the whole beta phase of StarCraft, um, you know, went away and the, the game actually released for the full version of StarCraft 2, that's when me and HD really didn't start to work together as much. And there's no drama at all. I'm going to stare directly in the camera. I think I'm looking at it. I actually can't see it because I'm blind. But uh, there is no drama between me and HD 100%. So, I'm just saying that, uh, I, I, I don't even know what else to say, because really what happened is after that first MLG, we just kind of started doing our own thing. So, and what I mean by that is just basically on our channels, we... I don't know, we just kind of started working by ourselves. I moved down to LA and I was working with a ton of awesome, talented people. I mean, Day9 is practically my neighbor. He lives very, very close. I work with about 30 people at the game station offices. I work with a lot of other gamers. Um, a lot of them live in the area. I mean, there's JonTron, of course, there's Dodger, and my other roommate, Ro. And there's just a lot of people in this area that I've started working with. And also, I started doing MLGs again. There was a big break where I wasn't doing MLGs. Um, I, my schedule was crazy busy. They had Day 9, who was absolutely killing it. And uh, I, I didn't do MLGs for a while, but then when they brought me back, I mean, I, I started doing it. It was something that, you know, they had about six events per year. I can't remember the exact amount per year, but it was a lot. Like, I felt like I was traveling at least once or twice a month purely for MLG. And that may not seem like a lot, but for an MLG, let's just break it down really quick. The MLG is three days, and I leave a day after boom, and I get there a day early, boom, plus the preparation for packing and, and making sure my sleep schedule is on, on time, you know, eating healthy, making sure my voice is relaxed. So I would say it's, it's about six to seven days per event. And that's, that's like a quarter of a month gone for one MLG event. Now, of course, I love doing MLG and it's, I love MLG. It's probably one of my favorite events to do, but I mean, that just means that I'm kind of off doing, you know, things like MLG. I'm traveling around a lot of different places. I did a lot of traveling last year. I went to PAX. I went to E3. I went to a BlizzCon and a lot of different other events. So if you combine all the travel plus, you know, doing my own channel with the, just the casting and all that, plus working with everyone that lives around me who I've been working with now for a year and a half, we just 
quite frankly, don't work together that much. There's really no drama, and really the best example I can give um, is a real life example that uh, I think really kind of is, is fairly similar to kind of the situation with me and HD. Yeah, again, there's no hard feelings between me and HD. So I have a friend, Tyler. I love Tyler. Tyler, if you see this, you know I love you. You're, you're awesome. And Tyler is someone who I went to college with for several years, and we immediately became really, really close friends. And it's kind of a funny story because when we very, very first met, I was just starting community college, I was still working fast food, um, and I believe it was kind of like one of my very first classes ever, and I was, I was on my gaming laptop, back then I had this really old iBuyPower laptop, but it did run World of Warcraft, which, you know, back then was pretty awesome. This was about, probably at least five years ago, and um, I was playing World of Warcraft on my Alliance Druid, I know, right, and uh, who would soon become one of my greatest friends, comes up to me, didn't know him at the time, and he looks at me playing my Alliance Druid, and he is like, you play Alliance? You're so stupid that you play Alliance, although he wasn't quite as uh, forgiving in the way that he was saying it. Basically, he called me a, a giant uh, and, and questioned my, my sexuality. So, it's stuff like that that, uh, for some reason with me, when people aren't afraid to say exactly what they're thinking, I love that. Um, especially when I'm at events like MLG and people come up to me and they're like, Husky, you know, I don't really like your cast, but I think you're doing a great thing. Or Husky, you know, I didn't really like you, but after seeing you in person at MLG, I really enjoy you. And some people come up to me and be like, you know what? I love Day 9 way more. And you know what? I really appreciate when people are actually honest rather than being, you know, kind of jaded. Especially, my favorite part is when someone online will smack talk me, and especially if it's a community figure or something like that. And then when I see them in person, you know, they're all just like hunky-dory, like everything's fine. And uh, really, you know, it's just like, well, if, you, if you're going to say, you know, I'm the worst caster in the entire world and I hope you die, at least in person, be, don't be afraid to say that. At least be man enough to say that. So. That's what I really appreciated about Tyler, is that he was like, dude, you're playing an Alliance Druid. Come on, you're a Night Elf? Really? A Night Elf? And uh, we quickly became really good friends after that because he quickly learned that, uh, you know, I, I'm more of a Horde guy anyway. I was just playing Alliance to play with some of my friends. And so, Tyler, we became really good friends. We worked in the computer lab together at our college. Um, we took a ton of classes together. We were always in groups together doing homework. And over the span of three or four years of going to school, we became really close friends, which is something that happens when you're in college. For the most part, you make some really good new friends. And, you know, we even lived together for a while there for about, I think it was like six or eight months we lived together um, before, you know, we ended up moving out. And we were just, we got along really well. We had the same personalities. We love relaxing, playing video games, which I think is something that a lot of you guys probably have in common. And we became really good friends. But, as time went on, as we graduated, he went off to a different job. I went off to my job here in LA. We honestly don't keep in touch all that much. And does that mean that something happened? Does that mean that there's some crazy drama between us? Does that mean that he slept with my girlfriend? Absolutely not. He's still one of my best friends and anytime I go back up to Oregon and we hang out, maybe it's only once a year. It still feels like he's my best friend, like, you know, we've hung out together a lot, we know each other, we can, you know, just watch a movie, play some games, go out to the bars, not that I drink, but uh, we can do whatever we used to do and it's still just fine. So that's really kind of what happened to HD, where nothing bad happened, we just slowly drifted apart. He's doing things like IGN, especially IGN. He has to travel every time he's shooting an IGN um, event. They have the live events, they have the live stream events that they're streaming almost on a daily basis sometimes. And he is working with Pain User, who happens to live in around the same area. And so we just we, we don't do all that much together anymore, and is it a bad or sad thing? I, I don't look at it that way. I think it's just kind of what happened between me and HD. Like, nothing dramatic happened. We just kind of slowly drifted off and did our own thing. Same way that me and Tyler, he's off being a... a he, he's working at a, a, a fairly successful company doing... He does like IT or stuff. I don't know exactly what he does, but I'm off over here doing my thing. And does that mean that we're no longer friends? Like we're like this far apart now? Absolutely not. So if you see anyone asking about HD and what happened, please just explain it to them or link it to me in that we've kind of drifted apart. I mean, look at what HD does compared to what I do. I do the, the big conventions. I do MLGs. Well, HD, he is completely different. He, he doesn't do his YouTube channel as much, but he's focusing more on things like IGN and his other projects that they're working on that they just, honestly, to be frank, they don't overlap. I mean, IGN and MLG, 
it's two different events that they have two different sets of casters for, and that's fine. It just means that we don't work together all that much anymore. So I, I don't look at it as a bad thing at all. I think um, a lot of people do love to kind of reminisce and nostalgia about the past. Um, that's something that I try and be very careful on, and maybe this is something that I should make it my own separate vlog about. But the reason that I try not to dwell on the past too much is because think of how far esports has come in the last year alone. Our last our, our last tournament together that we did was called the HDH, and that's a tournament that a lot of people loved. And thank you guys for the support on that tournament. Some of the videos have like almost a million views or like 600,000 it's crazy but that tournament was during the beta it was the only major tournament with cash prizes there's a couple thousand dollars on the line which now just seems kind of gimmicky but um, like MLG for example gets torn apart for a five thousand dollar prize pool ours was less than that and yet it got a ton of support and I think a lot of that was kind of the feelings of StarCraft 2 coming out, there was a new tournament for it, it was immediately becoming a sport, there was a lot of money on the line for then, um, the game was still being learned, the game also wasn't public, so players couldn't play the game, um, at least just the fans, you know, you couldn't actually get involved in the game quite yet. And so I think people look back on that, and it's not so much the tournament itself that was great, because I mean, our tournament. It was like mediocre at best uh, if you compare it to today's standards, but it's really kind of the excitement and the buzz and all of that that's kind of hard to recreate now, but people don't realize that a lot of the stuff that's happening now, like say the MLGs or, you know, starting watching Idra stream for the first time, which he's been streaming for a while, but all these things that are changing over the years, I think people in six to eight months are going to look back and be like, oh, you remember the good old days? And uh, I'm someone who doesn't really like to live in the past. Now, do I completely ignore the past? and say that, you know, the HDH never happened and I don't care about it? No, of course not. There was great times to be had and it was a lot of fun for everyone, a ton of fun casting it. I remember when Idra got defeated by White Rot in the final, spoiler alert, the turbine's two years old, and uh, the, the excitement in the air and all of that is insane and it's definitely something that I'm glad happened. Why is my chair so squeaky? I have got a WD-40 this chair someday. But um, yeah, so there's a lot of excitement there, but I, I think people don't realize that that they're still having similar excitements moving forward. Maybe you're a fan of the live event of the HDL or of HDL at the Facebook headquarters we did. That was one of my highlights of my life, casting StarCraft at Facebook headquarters. Maybe you're excited about some of the results at MLGs. I know I was. And so to say that like these things, cool things don't happen anymore, I, I would just be careful. Yes, there's a lot of cool stuff that happened in the past, but there's an amazing future for StarCraft 2, and it's all being made because of you guys. And um, really, the, the excitement and feedback from you guys is what's propelling it forward. So, long story short, nothing happened between me and HD. We're kind of off doing our own things. And say, for example, that uh, MLG has HD at it, who's casting. I'm not going to be like, oh man, that time you uh, dissed my mom, that means we can't cast together. I'm sorry, it's, it, that's just not the kind of drama that's there. I think people are looking a little more into it, but hopefully this clears up a bunch of answers. If he's at MLG, I'm sure we'll cast together, just like I cast with JP, with DJ Wheat, with Day9, Artosis, and Tasteless. I've casted all of them, which was finally my goal. I finally got Tasteless to cast with me. Not that I was, like, twisting his arm, but uh, it finally worked out that we cast together. I think a bunch of spit just came out perfect. But, um, you know, I've cast with a ton of different people, and I, I don't know. I, I, I love casting with a lot of people, and I really appreciate, you know, that I've had the opportunity to cast with them. And so if in the future that me and HD's paths cross, then we will of course absolutely cast together. But please guys, stop spreading rumors. We, we didn't upset each other. We loved how the HDH went. That was a wonderful, wonderful experience. We did want to do an HDH too, but again, we just kind of, you know, went our own separate ways, which is fine. And also, one thing we learned about the HDH, and you can ask, uh, Sundance, you can ask Carmack, you can ask anyone involved with a major tournament, that to raise the bar, you need an entire team of dedicated people. And at that time, it was just me and HD. We barely had time to make our own videos, let alone contact, you know, 16 players, get a prize pool together, schedule all the matches and all that. And at the time, two years ago, we didn't have those kind of resources. So that's why the HDH2 never happened. Honestly, we got in over our heads. At least I will say that I got in over my head. And um, it just got overwhelming and it never panned out. So. That's what happened with the HDH2. So hopefully this answers everyone's questions about what happened between me and HD. Really nothing happened. I love the guy. He's great. I ran into him at the last BlizzCon, and everything is capiche. 
Is that the right word? I hope that means what I think it means. Um, so everything's good, guys. Please don't cause any drama because there's really no drama there. And also, one, and, and kind of that same page, as if we're reading a book about StarCraft drama, under Chapter 8, Page 2, if you turn to that page, you will see. Uh, one of the things I, I think is really important about the StarCraft community is not causing needless drama, not pulling out the pitchforks, not, you know, flaming someone because they messed up a single time, not causing drama about what happened between me and HD. I think the important thing is to be excited about the events, giving feedback on what can make the events better, you know, being able to invest some of your money into esports because money makes the world go round. Everyone knows that. So, you know, buying a piece of IEM swag or buying even an Intel processor, supporting M LG by buying a hoodie or something. Just investing a little bit of money into esports, things like that, that is what is going to propel esports forward. Not dwelling on the past and, you know, being upset about minor things that happen. So I'm not saying that people asking about HD is in any way bad. I'm just saying on a completely unrelated page that the, the people who are supporting esports, these are the people who are writing the articles, these are the people who are going to the live events, who are literally just watching live streams. Even if you're just leaving five live streams on all day, you're helping those players be able to do what they love for a living. They're able to do that. That means that the games are more exciting. The games are more exciting, which means there's more sponsors. There's more sponsors, which means there's more coverage, which means more people watch. So at the ground level, you guys are the grunts. That means you guys are the ones doing the work. You are the ones supporting and building up esports higher and higher and higher. So uh, definitely try and keep a positive attitude about esports as a whole. And yes, there is people out there who have a much more, um, I don't want to say cynical, because then everyone's going to be like, oh, Total Biscuit, you're making fun of Total Biscuit. No, there's a, lot, there's a lot of people out there who I think have kind of a gloom and doom look over esports. And I personally think, this is just purely me 100%, I think there needs to be positive energy, exciting energy, and really people just supporting it. You're going to the bar crafts with your friends and enjoying it. You're, you know, not bickering about which caster is the best, but maybe supporting the players instead. You know, cheering for your favorite player, placing bets on your favorite player even. You know, focusing on what makes esports so great, and uh, if there's a caster you don't like, give them legitimate feedback. Say, you know, I don't like you because of this and this and this, and I honestly don't think you're cut out for casting because this and this and this. Don't just say, oh, fake and gay, you suck. Oh, this is so dumb. I'm not going to watch this stream ever. How does that really help esports if you sit back and think about it? But um, I think that the, the silent majority are really the ones who are propelling esports, and then it's the vocal minority, and yes, it is a minority, believe it or not, who um, kind of you know can bring it back down a couple of notches. So just be careful about that. I personally think that while you should have a constructive outlook on things, and if you have negative feedback to give, give it in a well thought out and mannered way. And then other than that, just be excited, have fun, go to the events, go with your friends, tell your grandma about it. Don't be just like, oh, esports is ruined because this happens. Um, that's kind of a, a tangent on the side that I shouldn't talk about as much, but uh, just to circle back around. So we're over here, and we need to circle all the way back around, back to where we were originally, I guess. Um, Nothing happened between me and HD. He's a great guy. Since then, I've worked with a lot of casters out there. I have no hard feelings for any casters at all. I love them all. Everyone I've cast with has been great. Even when I did that show match, uh, Thrilla in Da Silva, I was casting with someone who I'd never even talked to before, and that was a lot of fun. So I like to, I'm kind of like a, a promiscuous caster, I guess. Like, I love casting with a lot of different people, so long story short, TLDW. Too long, didn't watch. Yeah, if you skip to the end, nothing happened between me and HD. So thank you guys for leaving feedback. Please post your questions down below. I still read through a lot of the questions um, and also a lot of the questions from previous videos. So uh, please post it down below. This one wasn't answered or wasn't uh, questioned by a specific person. I've probably received it 10,000 times. Uh, so hopefully this puts it to rest. If you see people causing drama, spreading lies, uh, asking just a simple question, please either explain it to them or send, it, send them here. So hopefully that there's just one center location to have the question answered. So thank you guys so much for supporting the vlogs. I really hope you guys appreciate them. Uh, not appreciate them, that sounds, that sounds very dickish. Oh, I hope you guys appreciate the vlogs that I've done for you. I mean, uh, it takes so much work to make these. You guys really don't appreciate how much time. No, 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 it's not that. Um, I hope you guys enjoy them. And uh, for those of you who do appreciate it, I appreciate that. So I'm going to be doing more vlogs in the future. Um, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please feel free to subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'm 
I, I uh, have a new appreciation for the word appreciate in this video. So uh, yeah, I plan to do a lot more vlogs in the future. Leave your comments down below. I'm just repeating myself because that's what I do. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, oh, I'm blind. Okay, all right, hang on. Uh.